Okay, I have finished my little design using the vertical lines and today we're going to work on a diagonal line, the diagonal tapestry line. And at some point in your weaving, when you're maybe a third, half, or whenever, you want to turn your loom upside down and weave that last little half of an inch. The reason for that is you want to end your weaving in this plain band away from the peg bars. It's really difficult to maneuver your needles right next to the peg bars, so I always suggest turning your loom upside down at some point and weaving that last little half of an inch. So I am actually going to use the same marks as I used for the, the little uh, vertical line design. So I'm going to use those same marked warps and I'm going to start and do a squash blossom. Squash blossom is the basis for a lot of the designs you find in tapestry weave. And there's lots of variations you can do with the, with the squash blossom. So that's what we're going to work on today. So the same rule applies. If you're weaving from left to right, you're going to start with the yarn on the right. And I'm going to just lay my yarn in because it's the same color as the background. I fork here. And then I'm going to weave my center and it's going to go around those marked warps. Just wrap the tail back into the opposite shed. I have a little tapered tail there. And the left hand one is going to go around that marked warp. Oops, beat my bat in here. So then I change my shed. And this one is going to go over the brown. I have to want to make sure that it's going to go around that marked warp. Now this one is going to go around the marked warp on this side and because I am doing a diagonal I want it to shorten one warp on the left side. And that next warp over that I want it to go around is behind the batten so I can't pick it up until I'm going left to right. So that's where a lot of people make a mistake is that they actually warp jump and they would go around this one instead but you have to check and make sure that you're moving over one warp each row. So this one goes around that marked warp. I'm going to change my shed. And I'm starting with the one on the right because I'm weaving left to right. It's already around that marked warp. So this one wants to go around this marked warp, or it's not marked, this warp, it's one in from the marked warp. So I'm shortening it one warp on each side. So instead of going around that marked warp, it's going to go around the next warp. And ditto with the other side, it's going to go around one less than it did the last row. And then I'm going to weave my left hand, and it's going to go over the top, it's going to increase one warp each row. So the last time it went around this one that's in back, now it's going around this one that's in front. So I'm increasing it by one. And I'm decreasing this by one. And I'm increasing this by one. And it wants to go around that warp that's in back of the batten. So it went around this one last time and now it goes around this one. So re remember it's one more than it was last time. And this one is decreasing by one each time. And this one is increasing. 
So it wants to go around that marked, or it's not the marked warp, I'm not marking all of these warps. It wants to go around that warp that's in the back of the batten because you can see how it went from this warp to this warp and now it's going to the next warp. So it doesn't matter whether you're going right or left with your diagonal, it's the same principle. You're either increasing or decreasing whichever your design is calling for. So this one, another way I remember it is when I'm going smaller, the outside color always goes over that inside brown. That only works if you're going smaller with the color. So again, check and make sure which one you need to go around. I went around this one last time, so I'm going around that one. It's already, it's behind the batten, but it's already around that warp. And this one is going around those two. And this one is going one more than it did last time. Not to the end of this yarn here. So now when I change my shed, you'll note that it's going around this one that's right next to the center warp. So that's as far out as I want to go, or far in as I want to go with the tan. I don't want it to go over that center warp. So I add another piece on here. Remember to add another piece of yarn. You're just going to overlap them about an inch. Okay, now this one is as far as I want it to go in. So now I want to start the next design. And I want to go out to the next marked warp, warp which is this one right here. And I'm using the same marks as on the first design. You don't have to. You can use your make new marks depending on how big you want to make your squash blossom. Squash blossoms are great because you can make them as big as you want. You can put a squash blossom within a squash blossom. You can do the bottom half of a squash blossom. You can do a side half of the squash blossom. So they're really versatile design. So I'm out to the new marked warp here. It's already gone around that. So I want to go to the new marked warp on the right side, and it's behind the batten, and I have to pick that up on the next row. Sometimes I put myself a little reminder in, so that's a reminder that I need to go around that one the next row. And again, this one needs to go over that brown, which is behind the batten, so I have to pick it up my next row when I'm going right to left. So check and make sure which you need to go around. You need to go around this first brown. And this one again I had my little reminder in, so I know to go around that warp. And it needs to shorten up one each one on the left side. So I might put myself a little reminder in there too. So this one is going to go over the brown. Why I always recommend that you pull your weaving apart and look at it just to make sure you're shortening your design one each time. So pull it apart and look at it. Make sure you're going one shorter with the brown and one more with the tan each time. Then just pan it back down again. So this one you're increasing one. This one is decreasing one. This 
one is increasing one and it needs to go around that warp that's in back of the batten. So remember that's what confuses people. One time it, it will be in front of the excuse me, in front of the batten, the next time it will be in back of the batten. So you have to watch. Make sure you're moving over one each time. So always check and make sure. Do I move over one? Yes, I need to move over one. And on this one I'm shortening up one each row. So because I'm working with a bulky yarn, this is going to make my design pretty uh, coarse. It's not going to be real fine squash blossom. But remember this is just a pillow, so it's going to be perfectly okay. So again, check, make sure you're increasing one. And this one is decreasing one. So if I kept going the same direction I like I am, I would actually go back to here and I'd end up with little triangles. But Ruth Ann, we don't want little triangles, we want a squash blossom. So I went in four warps here, so I'm going to go in four warps here. So I count that first marked warp, one, two, three, four. So I'm over the fourth warp, that means it's time to increase my squash blossom. So, that's where I started last time. I want to go out to my next mark warp. So in this one, I want to go around that marked warp that's in back of the batten. And remember, when you're increasing a design, or decreasing, one side is always ahead of the other. So it's always my left side since I started on the left. It's always a row ahead of the right hand side. So I've increased my left. I'm go way out here. Way out there around that one. So this is where if you wanted to make multiple squash blossoms, you could start another one now and have a squash blossom within a squash blossom. And the great thing about squash blossom designs is you can make them as big as you want. You can keep going out a little bit further. You can shorten them up. They're very versatile. So I'm going to go in four on each side here just like I did here. I went in four, I went in four, and then increased. So I'm going to go in four here, and then increase again. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to go out another eight warps, which is what I went out here. You can count those warps. I went out eight warps. So I'm going to go out another eight warps before I start decreasing. So I'm just going to weave by myself here a little bit, and then you can join me for part two. Thank you for watching.